very welcome to all of you to tonight's webinar about webhooks with monday.com and of course make so and lucas has dubbed this the power of webhooks i'm frederick castleholm i'm the cro and one of the founders and owners of omnitas and together with me we have a completely new face to our webinars and that is lucas anderson one of our make specialists so lucas do introduce yourself Hi everyone, great to be here and be part of this webinar. Uh, as Frederick said, I'm one of the perhaps make specialists, one of the integration consultants here at Omnitas. Uh, and yeah, most of my days have uh, are make is some sort of part of it really. Uh, it's it's really the most more, more my area of expertise, let's say, especially then along with Monday, which is also the other part of my day, I would say. Mm usually in combination right <laughs> exactly it's usually some sort of both really <laughs> so uh we actually got our first question and we're gonna get to your question later on asaf i promise you i have it noted so with that lucas let's talk some webhooks let's do it so let's just start off with really basic so simply what is a webhook right so to make, put it kind of simple, uh, of course, there's more to this, but simply you can compare a webhook to a normal address to a website. So for example, if you have a website like omnitas.se, you have a user which puts it into your browser, which requests to the server, which spits back the website content, right? So you send the, the web address and you get back the content to your browser and you can view the page. Webhooks aren't really that different. They also use the HTTP protocol, but instead here you might have in this case, so let's say Monday. So Monday we will put in some sort of trigger. So when something happens, which we specify specifically, then Monday will use this webhook address to send it to some other sort of service, like in this case, make. In make, we can use this and do really whatever we want to do with it. With this webhook, we also get some data as well. And this data we can then use and make to do all sorts of things. For example, after we, what we want to do is oftentimes we, from Monday, have a trigger that uses the webhook and make. And then really what we want to do is just put something back into Monday. So in this way, we kind of use Monday as both maybe our front end and back end. We might use it as front end to use the triggers. We might get data from Monday in make, so sort of like a back end. And then we spit something back into Monday. In this case, make would also kind of be our back end functionality wise, right? So this is one of the most usual examples that we see day to day, but it doesn't always have to be Monday. You can really connect it to just about anything that has some sort of API connection since this is usually what, what makes work, make works with is all sorts of APIs, right? Yeah, I, I think when it comes to make, we have ready-made endpoints. And when I say endpoints, I think of integrated services, which in numbers in the thousands, and then we can actually go, as long as someone have an open API, we can actually work with that. And that's something Lucas does from time to time, right? Yeah, exactly. Make does have, a library of API libraries where it, you can really just use standard modules, which is really nice to do. And it really cuts down on stuff like development time. And also you don't have to like search for errors as much since most of the stuff are already done for you. So you don't have to sit down and really code custom calls. But sometimes if it isn't part of the library, as Frederick said, we can also use this to make custom calls, which it will still help you out to not be able to really get down to the nitty gritty parts of making calls. It will still help you out and make it easier for you. Yeah, and you also get the nice routing charts and stuff, which you won't do if you do it like in just pure code. Exactly. Yeah, so, so that, that's a web book. It's basically yeah. sending a piece of information to a web, web address, having something happen over there and taking further action basically which might be spitting it right back to you pretty much now there's also worth to note here that this is the main way we use webhooks there's a bunch of other ways to use a webhook as well it can even be part of like a normal website 
So for example, if you click a button on a website, maybe that website server sends some sort of call to their backend server. This way it's more similar to a normal query, right? Yeah. So we have a lot of, lot of applications really. Yeah, you, you can really be smart about how you use it. 